in real time rendered 3D scenes is an awesome thing. But since we're working in real time and we're working uh, in terms of frames per second, uh, performance is always a factor. So let's look at where this project works really, really well for performance and where if you are finding some issues with performance, some things that can help you out with this. So first off, I have this FPS counter up here enabled. Uh, this should be enabled in your project settings because this is part of this shared project. But if you want to find this FPS counter, it's really, really useful to have this up here all the time. It tells you not only the FPS, but the amount of time it takes to write one frame in milliseconds, which if you want to get really, really technical, uh, this is the more useful number, actually, the amount of time it takes to write one frame, because as you start comparing uh, adding new things in, this is actually a more mathematical way to see the difference in different things that you're adding in. If you want to get this FPS counter, you can go edit editor preferences and search show frame, show frame rate and memory. And yeah, with that selected, you'll have this really handy performance bar always up for you. So you can really monitor that performance as you add stuff. One thing that can be really useful to look at is uh, whether your environment is tanking your performance. Uh, and an easy way to just differentiate that is by just disabling all of these composure elements just with this viewpoint here. And you can see now that I've disabled all of these, I'm up to around 120 FPS. So you can see that my scene is running at 120 FPS. So it's just all the compositing really, just control Z all of that. It's all the compositing that is bringing it down. And that is to be expected. We're drawing a copy. Each of these is a copy of the whole scene. So you notice the rendering 3D actors over the top of other 3D actors. It's drawing these, which don't actually take too much performance, and it's compositing it all together and it's rendering it all together. But if we hide all the CG in the scene, we can see that the media plates here are only really taking 20 FPS here. So this, this, and this is only really taking 20, 20 FPS. It's just useful to know and keep that in mind that the more of these uh, CG kind of layers you have going on, the you're going to see a big hit in performance. And that's to be expected. Something else to note is that in editor, my performance is going to be a little bit lower. That's because it's going to disable these preview windows when it starts. Um, and once the game kind of boots up, once everything gets running, you know, uh, I've actually, actually after changing a couple sequences, you know, I'm getting 57-ish, 57, 58. The broadcast standard is 50 frames per second and obviously any overhead over that means you can really uh, start making the scene more exciting and do more stuff more interesting stuff like that so anything over 50 is good so one thing to be really careful of when you're outputting your media is whether you need to be rendering as many screens as you are as we covered when whenever you've got all of these layers it's just another whole layer of cg that is rendering in order to keep this as low as possible you can think about how you're outputting your media so here in the outputs we've got uh three output options set which you can use uh, and this is currently set to play a viewport compositing output and what that means is it's just outputting the whole this whole composure thing onto the player viewport. If you're player viewport compositing and you're just previewing this in Unreal Engine, you can just press play and this is going to play. And your FPS should return to pretty high once you're actually running your uh, running this kind of preview. But say you're using that media output or you're using that stream to RTMP, um, you might you might not need this whole viewport. You might need to see this viewport. So so as we discussed, you can use this render target to output to you know. RTMP or out the output this to a media output. So now that we've got this render target enabled, we can just make sure that this player viewport compositing is disabled. And then we can double click this out as our preview window and we can press play and our main viewport will be disabled now. So we're not having to render that, but instead we're rendering basically our screen is being rendered to here instead. So we're still getting good FPS over 50. Close this, it should improve even more. Uh, improve by a couple frames. I guess because it's still rendering it under the hood maybe. But essentially just checking those outputs and whether you need to see this viewport output is quite useful. Just a tip to make sure your FPS doesn't go too low. So yeah, we've got being careful with these outputs. That's a useful one. If by any chance you're hiding all of these and you're seeing that your FPS doesn't go much higher, that'd be quite unlikely because it will be adding on to the cost. But if you're say pretty low, uh, if you're lower than like 100 with all of this disabled, it is well, uh, well worth looking at level optimization tips you can use things like these optimi optimization view modes such as like shader complexity you can see how well you're doing in terms of your level building i've got nothing in this level that's any higher than red so it's the red the red things are not ideal but overall it's looking pretty much green it's a pretty pretty nicely optimized level not too bad other view modes like this light map density and light complexity that's you know how many of your lights are crossing over each other um but you can go into more detailed environment building and environment optimization uh, videos for that let's keep looking at composure composure tips we've also got dlss3 enabled on here so by default we do have some 
kind of subtle DLSS settings set on here uh, and you can tweak these by clicking down on the CG element down here and under the off-world live capture settings uh, we've got an advanced section under render settings uh, we've got enable upscaling here we've got a screen percentage of 50 set in this which is a really really big upscale so we're only rendering half the pixels and then using dlss to ai upscale this again this does cause some artifacts which you might notice um, this is really really bitty and this you know this media plate is really really uh smudgy but we're only using it for reflections and things like that so in the final comp pop this out you know we've got the nice footage over the top however you can see some of this artifacting around here so it depends how much your talent is moving and you know what your scene is comprised of whether this is going to affect you or not when it goes up to 100 you might notice it goes really really smudgy but if you just press like 99 percent, this will be pretty much the standard uh exactly what's seen in your viewport and you can see how that changes your performance when you begin play just give it a second change some of these sequences you can see that we've got a crisper image here but uh we're we're down to below 50 frames per second here so you know it's up to you to weigh up whether whether this is useful for your shot or your use case whether you need that dlss upscale so yeah to enable that again we can just go cg and set that screen percentage to 50. we have an upscaling on the 3d map that we have here as well so you can set this screen percentage lower if you want see if that boosts your performance and the secondary screen percentage is worth having a look at but it doesn't always affect anything for me so i have gained a couple frames but you can see that my mask is a little bit bit more artifacty you can see a couple couple artifacts around this edge here again it's a balancing act really of whether you want those couple extra frames uh, for that visual quality change or whether you can uh, get away with having this at you know 50 percent or something dlss is a bit of a balancing act in that way but it can be a really awesome way if you're doing especially live broadcasts to trade off a little bit of visual quality for uh, more frames per second if you are using a media source you can always double click this and check your imported and displayed uh, resolution here this is a full 1920 by 1080 video so maybe if you're looking at saving a bit of a cost here you could uh, import a lower res video especially if you're if you have a shot where they're quite far away from the camera this whole view plane is you know it might be exported at 1920 by 1080 uh, so this is only a small part of that scene at that point so you could get way of a lower res video on the import here so resolution is definitely a balancing act and it definitely depends on what you what exactly you want out of your scene and what your scene is comprised of but hopefully that helps you with a few kind of checkboxes how you can use these layered checkboxes to test to see what is causing drops in frame rate how you can monitor your frame rate and a couple of things you can do to make sure you're only outputting what you need to be outputting and also a bit of dlss to give you a performance boost on the actual visual output so yeah as i say it's a balancing act but hopefully that's a few tips things to look at for if you're looking at boosting your performance